intensity, speed, airtime. These are all reasons why people love Texas Stingray. People easily call this ride number one at the park and even claim it to be one of the top coasters in Texas. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about why it's such a great ride, and I am even calling it the best in the world. Psych! <laughs> nah, fams, I'm talking about why this ride sucks ass. Before I really get into this video, I just want to say that 90% of you guys aren't subscribed, so bruh, subscribe, because I post new videos just like this one every single week. Anyways, Texas Stingray is a new for 2020 GCI wooden coaster that opened on February 22nd, 2020 at SeaWorld San Antonio. In terms of my actual opinions, yeah, it's a pretty great ride. But here, I'm gonna act like I'm looking at myself in the mirror, and I'm going to nitpick at every single flaw this coaster has. So starting with the least important category and moving up to the most important, first let's talk about aesthetic. One huge element on all great coasters is that feeling of intimidation, of excitement and fear as you walk up and see the beautiful elements of a ride. The colors of the track and supports popping out at you as you stare at the ride in awe, rushing to get into the queue. Yeah, Texas Stingray has none of that. In truth, this ride is pretty ugly, which even though that does help me relate to the ride on a pretty deep level, it really shouldn't be. At the beginning, I said that this is a wooden coaster, which is characterized by the fact that most of the track is made of wood, but GCI, in an attempt to make the structure stronger and therefore less maintenance heavy, pulled a reverse RMC and constructed the structure out of steel. While this was a great move in terms of cutting down on maintenance costs, Texas Stingray, as a result, doesn't look very good. In a way, it seems out of place, kind of like an eyesore for this part of the park. The gray structure looks in a way dirty and sad as you walk up to the ride. This provides kind of a weird sense of disappointment, as the rest of the rides and roller coasters in the park are absolutely beautiful and even breathtaking to look at, while Texas Stingray really just isn't. Honestly, I'm starting to think that maybe Six Flags and SeaWorld should just switch rides. I mean, SeaWorld could get Aquaman, which they could put in this plot of land, and Six Flags could finally give Fiesta or Over Texas their modern wooden coaster that they need. This could really work because you know damn well that Six Flags doesn't give a crap about looks. Anyways, this terrible aesthetic of a coaster is one of the reasons why I hate Texas Stingray. Continuing on with the theme of theming, let's talk about, well, theming. First of all, what does a Texas Stingray even look like? Because you know it's not whatever this derpy thing is here on the front of the train. So apparently there isn't actually a type of animal called a Texas Stingray. So what type of rays live in Texas? Manta rays? Wait, so you're telling me that SeaWorld named a ride Texas Stingray, which, if you think about it, is pretty much just a manta, and then put a ride called Manta in a place where mantas are rarely spotted? <sighs> SeaWorld, what are you doing? In all seriousness, though, this ride has no theming at all. As you step into the queue line, you will be met by Switchback. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 not that kind of switch back, these ones. Yeah, not a yay moment anymore, is it? In terms of the station, there isn't anything there either. Just kind of a shed. <laughs> yeah, I wish. This lack of theming was one of the many disappointments of this coaster, and was one of the many reasons why I hate Texas Stingray. Next up on the chopping block is something that has been unnecessarily praised on all GCI coasters, and that is the restraints. GCI uses lap bars. No, no, no. Let me finish. They use crappy lap bars. Something that is praised on most airtime filled coasters is the fact that many have lap bar restraints that make sure that you can get plenty of room for maximum airtime. GCI, though, managed to F that up. 
Instead of a lap bar that stays fixed, like many RMC lap bars or a T-bar for example, they instead fall onto your lap, meaning that the second you celebrate evading those pesky ride ops and scoot back in your seat, the restraint will just fall down. Would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those meddling restraints. This causes kind of a weird situation, as it's really hard to enjoy the ride experience itself because you're constantly just holding up the restraint, and if you aren't, the lap bar will just fall down, preventing any airtime that you could get. I really hate these awful heavy restraints, and therefore hate Texas Stingray as a whole. Speaking of preventing airtime, you wouldn't have gotten much anyways. Although GCI coasters are known for their insane airtime moments, Texas Stingray thrills riders with a whole bunch of super crazy, super intense turns. Yeah, this roller coaster really seems underwhelming, with many of its riders expecting an airtime filled experience which they don't really get. And I know what you may be thinking, Oh Jay, but what about the laterals? Those must be good. <laughs> <laughs> nope! All of these turns are severely banked, which not only takes away from the lateral g-forces that this coaster could have had, but it also takes away from airtime that this coaster would have given if these hills and turns weren't banked. And really, in the wise words of Taylor Bybee, I just want airtime. Well, sorry Stoned Taylor, you're not getting any here. I mean, at least the coaster isn't crawling. Like a baby? The severe and disappointing lack of airtime is probably the most important reason why I hate Texas Stingray. Finally, Texas Stingray also lacks another key element on a ride. Variety. Through the layout, you will fly into a... Actually, let me just let my dude Dakota handle this one. And if you thought the ride has been rough so far, prepare for the roughest part of the ride, which occurs during a series of turns, followed by another turn. After another turn, fly into a turn, which leads you into the final turn, but only after you've gone through another turn. And then, it's at last over. And so ends the most bland ride ever created. And there you go. Didn't even have to talk for that one. Texas Stingray lacks all of these super important features that make a coaster great. Theming, beauty, good restraints, airtime and or other g-forces, and finally, variety. This makes this roller coaster just an ugly mess of turns that is over in less than 50 seconds. And that is why I hate Texas Stingray. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. As I said at the beginning, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I upload new videos just like this one every single week. 90% of you guys aren't even subscribed, and because you made it to the end of the video, that must mean that you like my vids, so subscribe. Most of the footage used in this video is mine, but some isn't, so go check out the creators of that footage on screen now and direct links to the videos in the description below. Anyways, I will see you guys all next time. Peace out. Psych! <laughs> nah, fams, I'm talking about why this ride sucks aspirin. <laughs> aspirin? <laughs> sucks aspirin.